everyone and welcome to the Belisario College of Communications Accepted Student Program. My name is Emily Miller and my role here at the university and with the Belisario College is to talk to high school students and their families every single day. This evening we are so excited to be connecting with you and we are thrilled to have the opportunity to introduce you to a little bit about who we are in the Belisario College. So the goal tonight is first and foremost to extend a warm welcome and a very, very exciting congratulations to all of you. Those of you joining us have accepted or have been accepted or received an offer of admission to Penn State uh, University Park campus or one of our other Commonwealth campuses, specifically in the Belisario College. So congratulations. I hope that you've really taken time to celebrate this accomplishment. Um, and tonight, we just wanted to introduce you to a little bit about who we are and help you understand some ways that you can connect with us, that you can stay engaged, and how you can learn more about what your Penn State story can and will look like. Today, we will be doing an overview of who we are as a college, a little bit about our majors, but mostly we're going to focus on the support that students in our college have. And then we're also going to have a student panel. So we have several students that are currently working in the Belisario College who will be joining us virtually to answer your questions. Again, the goal of this session is to get you the information that you need to make your decision of whether or not you see yourself being successful here at Penn State. We want this to be interactive and engaging. So if you have questions along the way, please feel free to submit those questions or comments via either the chat feature or the Q&A feature. I have with me a lovely colleague on the, on, the, uh, on the Zoom call with us today who I'll introduce you to a little bit. She will be monitoring those questions and comments. So please feel free to submit anything that's on your mind as we progress through the, through the program tonight. And she'll be sending lots of great information there. So a little bit about us and who we are as the Belisario College of Communications. We are one of the largest accredited programs of mass communications in the country. But what does that mean and why should you care? It means that the governing body that takes a look at communications education has taken a look at what we are doing here in the Belisario College and they have proven and they have deemed that we are current, okay? We are not a bunch of dinosaurs teaching you how to write for a newspaper that simply does not exist in the same way that it used to, all right? Accreditation means that we are current, we are relevant, and it also means that our students are getting jobs and are working in communications careers. These are all very important components when we're thinking about what the next um, page or what the next chapter in your education is going to look like. We at Penn State, first and foremost, here again in the Belisario College, we are Penn State. We are a big school, and that means we have big school resources. We have resources like um, one of the largest accredited programs. We have resources like the largest living paid alumni network in the nation. We have a beautiful brand new state of the art media center. These are all resources that you don't get to have without first being that big school. However, in the Belisario College of Communications, we get to provide that small school feel. Now, there are about 46, 47,000 students on our campus. That's a lot. And we love having all of the opportunities and resources that come with that big campus. But in the Belisario College, we have less than 3,000 students. The classroom size for an upper level communications course is 20 or fewer students. OK, this is how we're going to know who you are. This is how we're going to support you on a one on one level. And this is how we are going to be able to funnel resources and opportunities right directly to you. Now, one of those big school resources that I mentioned was the Belisario Media Center. We are so proud and so excited to have opened this brand new media center just over three years ago. This is the part of the Belisario College, right? This is all of the exciting places and spaces where you will call home as a Belisario student. So this is our TV studios, our film studios, our comm agency, all of our classrooms, all of our, our um, computer labs, all of the facilities, all of the resources, all of the 
tremendous instructional equipment that you will need to be successful is all brand new right in the media center in the heart of campus. We are thrilled to have this opportunity to support you. And of course, we're going to extend an open invitation for you to come to campus and check out our media center firsthand. The conversation in the rest of this program is going to focus on the three C's. So as a student, how are we going to help you navigate your experience? How are we gonna help you maximize the time that you're spending here on campus? And that is through this three C formula. The first C is classroom instruction, right? This is how we're going to build up that solid foundation of information and those instructional goals that are going to be um, the, the foundation of your education. It is also so important that we branch out into that second C, that campus media opportunities. This is where we're really gonna get some hands-on real world experience. Clubs and organizations, starting from the very first day that you get to campus, this is where you are going to have the chance to be in front of that camera, behind that microphone, creating you know, digital advertising, creating campaign work through public relations, being in studios, being in our creative spaces and doing the things that you wanna do. This is the number one biggest difference in our program versus other programs nationwide. And that's when you get to do the things that you wanna do. Through campus media opportunities, this is how we're gonna get you involved starting from day one. That third and final C is career preparation. So we want you to know that we have our own office that focuses on getting you ready and preparing you for life after Penn State and making sure that you have all of the skills, all of the resources to be successful after you walk out of here in four years. So let's focus on that first C. The first C again is classroom instruction. So what is it that we teach in the Belisario College? We have five majors, and we're going to talk briefly about each one of those. We also have students representing all of these majors joining us later. So if you have questions about these majors, um, feel free to ask them of our students in just a little bit. Our first major is our largest major, and that's advertising and public relations. Advertising and public relations is one major, and students get to choose which side of that program they want to specialize in, either advertising or public relations. So students, again, when I, when I talk about this major, I like to compare it to some other things that are happening on campus. Oftentimes, students hear the, the word marketing. We have marketing here at Penn State. It lives in the College of Business, the Smeal College of Business here. We're going to put that on this end of the creative spectrum, okay? So marketing in the Smeal College of Business is understanding the how, why, and when we're making the strategic business decisions we're making in marketing, okay? The other side of that, that kind of creative spectrum is graphic design. We have graphic design here at Penn State too that lives in the College of Arts and Architecture. And this is the most creative side. We are focusing on how we're making advertisements look good, right? Why are we choosing blue instead of green for this advertisement? Along that creative spectrum, our major of advertising and public relations is situated in the middle in that we're bringing in that business acumen to what we're doing, but we're keeping that creative side and we're adding media and communications components. Again, students will graduate with a degree in advertising and public relations in that program. Our next major is journalism. Inside of journalism, students have the opportunity to, to select a path that fits them best. So the opportunities for specialization in journalism, we have broadcast journalism. These are the students that wanna be seen and heard. They wanna be in front of that microphone and in front of that camera. We also have photojournalism. These are the students that want to tell a story through photography. And then we have print and digital journalism. These are the students who are creating 
digital stories and and finding a pathway to give a voice to others. This is the more traditional side of journalism that you think of, but what's so important to know about our journalism curriculum in general is that we are reaching out and branching out across all media platforms. We are not simply focused on newspaper. Again, the newspaper doesn't exist in the same way that it did um, you know, 10, 15, 30 years ago. But the need to be in the news, the need to be in politics, the need to be in events and, and to report stories is growing and changing in exciting new ways. So journalism uh, offers a lot of career opportunities that are new and across all the digital platforms. Next up is film production. Film production is a creative major. These students want to hold that camera in their hand and they want to create. And in this major, we allow them to do just that. Students are participating in the entire creative process, whether that's coming up with story ideas or writing screenplays into casting characters and pre-production, then actually being on set, being on location, using our cameras and our technology, and then into post-production editing and all the way up to packaging for sale. So in that regard, we're a bit of a generalist film program, but we allow you to find your passion in that creative process. And through course selection, you will specialize in, you know, again, whether that's more cinematography or that is screenwriting, or if you really love editing, choosing the right courses that allow you to, to uh, deepen your knowledge in those places is how we will work with you to complement your film degree. In our film program, we take a look at three different types of film. We have narrative film, documentary film, and alternative, or sometimes we call it experimental film. Again, students have the opportunity to take a look at all three types and then specialize and in, in take a deeper look into out of the three types of film. Next up is telecommunications and media industries. This major has several different options, including law and policy, management and entrepreneurship, and programming and production. We think of telecommunications and media industries as our business major, okay? This is the business of taking all of the moving, working, functioning pieces and putting them together for a clear and cohesive, beautiful piece of communication, all right? So sometimes we think if that broadcast journalist wants to be in front of that camera and our film student wants to be behind the camera, our telecommunication student wants to tell those other two what to do, all right? They often take on roles in um, as producers, executive producers, creative directors, all of those types of roles are kind of live in that telecommunications and, and uh, media industries. It's also really interesting to know that we have an entire program that is built and focused on supporting those broadcast and other journalism students as well. Other tracks or other options, uh, things like law and policy, students will also take to understand um, how to use a communications degree as a stepping stone to graduate school or law school as well. Last and certainly not least is media studies. Media studies has several options as well, including media effects, international communications, film and television studies, and society and culture. Media studies is a research and teaching type of major. Students here are taking a finer look at how does the media impact society or how does that impact our culture? Um, just like how does who we are as a community, as a culture? How does that impact what we are seeing in the media? Where are these media messages coming from? Are they controlled? Are they censored? But also how are we using the media as a platform for adv advocacy and for change? So I hope that you see that across all of our majors, the thread that binds us is that we are all storytellers. So how and what medium and what method do you want to tell that story and what opportunity, what outlet are you using to give others voice helps guide and direct which is the, is the best choice in, in major for you. One of my favorite things to point out about communications is that it is powerful 
and it is necessary. It doesn't matter what industry you want to be in, everyone needs a communicator. So I challenge you to shift your thinking um, from the power of communications to the power of a communicator. Every industry needs you, whether that's uh, politics, whether it's nonprofit, whether it's education, healthcare, technology, business, everyone needs you. So you as a creative storyteller and an effective communicator get to take your skills and bring them to an environment, to an industry that you are passionate and interested in. This is the power of communications. So maybe you're sitting here thinking that communications is the right spot for you. And I'm so excited to, to help, under, help you understand what the right fit is for you. Or maybe you're sitting here thinking after learning a little bit more about our, our majors that they all sound good. So what I want you to know and what I want you to remember from this presentation is that you are not supposed to know exactly what it is that you want to do after four years here. You've got lots of time and lots of space to grow and to explore. And so the team of people that are here in the Belisario College that are going to help you grow and explore are academic advisors. This team is absolutely going to be essential in your experience. And so again, with me today, I have a wonderful colleague. Her name is Nikki Diorio, and she is an academic advisor on our staff. Nikki, would you like to say hello and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what academic services is and, and, and why you enjoy supporting students so much? Thanks, Emily, for that introduction. Um, as Emily said, my name is Nikki Diorio. I am one of the academic advisors in the Belisario College. Um, in the Belisario College, uh, students are assigned an advisor um, at new student orientation, and that advisor will stick with them throughout their time at Penn State. Our role in advising is to not only help to make students feel welcome, but support them in pursuing success in whatever way success looks like for them. So many of our students, as Emily mentioned, will come into Penn State knowing exactly what they wanna do and we can get them on the right path so they can move forward um, to achieve those goals. Other students will come in and say, I have no idea what I'm doing. I feel like communications are my would be my strength, but I really don't know what I wanna major in. So we help them sort of plan courses in an intentional way that help them to explore while still meeting degree requirements and staying on track. Um, and again, seeing them through till the very first time they schedule courses until they walk across the stage at graduation after four years. So um, the culture of our team in advising is that of, um, you know, a lot of support. So we are highly sought after by our students. Um, approximately 75% of our students um, will meet with an advisor at least once a semester. Um, it's not required that students meet with advising at Penn State, um, but I think that's a testament, that high percentage rate of our meetings is a real testament to um, the type of service that we provide. Um, we're a very caring group of people. It's a big place at Penn State, and we see it as our role to really help students navigate sort of the bigness and make the Belisario College feel like home. Great. Thank you, Nikki. And so for all of you out there listening and watching tonight, if you do have academic based questions, Nikki's going to be a tremendous resource. So please don't hesitate to send those questions and she'll be happy to answer those in the chat as well. As an additional resource in the Belisario College, we have the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. So my colleague on the screen there, his name is uh, Assistant Dean Gary Abdullah. He and his staff exist to make sure that every single student who walks through the doors of the Belisario College is recognized, celebrated, and supported. He likes to say that there's a whole lot of life and learning that happens in college. Your academic advisor is here to help with the classroom things, right? And we have career services that are here to help you get a job. But a lot of life happens between those two waypoints. And so Gary and his staff are here to help you with all of the questions, all of the issues, all of the opportunities for growth and exploration that happen between. 
some other opportunities that both Gary's office and Nikki's office can help you understand and help you kind of maximize the time that you're here at Penn State are opportunities like study abroad. So a lot of students are interested in traveling and we support that absolutely. So there are over 140 countries represented in the Office of Global Programs here at Penn State. And I can assure you that wherever you've dreamed about going, that there is a group of Penn State students going and that we will help you plan accordingly. A traditional study abroad program is when you're gone for an entire semester. Um, so whether that's fall semester or spring semester, or you can even, even travel abroad um, in the summertime as well. But planning accordingly and making sure that we're, we're allowing you to travel at the right time and that you're getting the right credits and that you're understanding how to navigate that embedded global perspective into your education is what Nikki's office in academic advising can help triage those questions, help connect you with the Office of Global Programs, and help make smooth transitions to make sure that you're securing and making those big check marks in your kind of college bucket list. Another opportunity that I'm always very excited to talk about is our embedded programs. Um, so are there additional abroad opportunities in the Belisario College? So an embedded program and is a, an abbreviated travel piece. And this is where we're absolutely studying communications-based coursework in that embedded piece. So you would enroll in an embedded or a broad program. Um, it's a class. So for the first part of the semester, you, you go to class and you begin to plan your project. You begin to do your research and do all of your planning. And then over spring break or Thanksgiving break, you and your professor and your classmates, so we're talking 20-ish people, travel abroad to execute your communications-based project. And then when you come home for the rest of the semester, that's your opportunity to refine, to edit, to polish, and to publish. And so this, again, incorporating that global perspective is so important into what we're doing. So we want to make sure that we're leveraging many different types of opportunities for you to grow and explore academically. We even have the John Curley Center for Sports Journalism here in the Belisario College. This is an exciting opportunity for us to really focus on those students who are interested in incorporating sports and athletics into their education. So most commonly, we get journalism students who are interested in the Curley Center, but you do not have to be a journalism student to pursue the sports journalism certificate. OK, so essentially what this program is or what happened was we knew that we have a powerful journalism and communications program here at Penn State. But we've also really emerged as a powerhouse in the Big Ten across, you know, when we're looking at depth of athletic programs, we have 31 NCAA collegiate level sports here at Penn State. Why not let the two hold hands? And so that's how the Curley Center was created. It is one of the first programs of its kind, and it has grown to be one of the largest programs of, of its kind. So students here are incorporating sports and athletics into their classroom experience, taking courses like sports broadcasting, sports writing, sports information management, uh, sports media and society. And then they're partnering that education with real world sports specific internship and career opportunities. So we've got to get you out there working in big time sports. We love Penn State sports. Penn State sports are great, but there's more to like to Penn, than Penn State sports. So taking students to things like the Super Bowl, the Paralympics, the Women's World Cup, having opportunities through the Curley Center for our students to cover those major sporting events is what we're pushing. Uh, those are the types of opportunities that we are pushing to our students every single day. So next, we want to talk about that second C. So what do I mean by campus media opportunities? I mean that it is not enough for you to sit in a lecture-based classroom and get A's. We love a student who is strong academically, but it is so important in our curriculum that you're stepping outside of that classroom and you are doing and you are using the skills that we're teaching you in that classroom and you're putting the, those resources and those skill sets into action. So as a first semester, first year student, we're gonna tell you to join the student film organization. 
join the advertising club, join the daily collegian, join our yearbook, join com radio, join all of the opportunities that are putting you in collaborative, creative spaces to do what you want to do. This is the experience that is going to further propel you into your academics. But this is the experience that's going to open up a lot of really exciting and powerful career opportunities as well. So that brings us to our third and final C and how we are preparing you to take these experiences and take these opportunities and take this education and implement it into the real world. So in the Belisario College, we have our own Office of Internships and Career Services. This is a staff of people who are passionate about helping students, and we're only focusing on Belisario students, okay? This means we are not worried about placing finance majors into internships. We're not worrying about engineers. We are only focusing on you, on getting you an internship that builds your skills, and getting you a job after you graduate. So the first step in that process is making sure that you have the right internship opportunities. And these internship opportunities can come in all different shapes and sizes. Internships are available as soon as you're ready. All right. So we often tell students that it depends on the student when you're ready to have an internship. We want to make sure that the transition into college is a smooth transition for you. So based on how that transition goes, we wanna make sure you remember how to study. We wanna make sure that you're not homesick. We wanna make sure that you're making some friends and that you are establishing good practices as a student before we open up new and different opportunities. So most often these internships, uh, this internship search for students starts the summer between their first and second year, but it depends on the student. Again, you can have an internship during the school year while you're taking courses. You can have an internship during the summer. So if you're gonna move home, if you're going to be, doesn't matter where you're going to be, we're gonna work with you and we're gonna work for you to make sure that we're providing the opportunities to place you into internships and that again, are going to grow your skill set. And we're gonna use those internships as opportunities to build some stair steps that get you to that launching pad that launches your career. So hopefully some of the logos on the screen in front of you pop off the screen as opportunities that really interest you. Um, we have a database right now that sits at over 4,000 internship opportunities for our students um, to, to evaluate whether that's a good size database or not. I'll remind you, we have less than 3,000 students in the college. So to have more internship listings than we have students is not a bad ratio when we, when we talk about placing students in real world work experiences. Again, I also wanna point out that um, some of the logos that you'll see on the page don't strike you as traditional communications industry employers. And that is because everyone needs communicators. So the opportunities are really very endless um, to make sure that you are in positions where we're really expanding your knowledge and skill set. We also have additional programs, uh, internship programs that happen not here on campus. We have internship programs that run in Washington, D.C. and in Hollywood. So these are opportunities for you to live and work in either city for an entire semester. And you're also carrying a full course load of Penn State courses. OK, so this is Penn State courses, Penn State credits, Penn State faculty. So we're not um, we're not transferring credits from other institutions in. Um, this, is, this is a completely Penn State kind of focused program. You are also provided a, an internship in either location as well. So these are opportunities that are, that are provided to, to typically a junior or senior level student. And again, an opportunity to live and work in either DC or Hollywood tends to really get our students excited about pursuing uh, internship opportunities. So as a student kind of progresses through the many exciting opportunities and experiences that we have here, again, we are career focused. We want to make sure that we're working towards that goal of being hireable and desirable as a young professional. 
So the way in which we kind of navigate career preparation is um, through several, several different uh, kind of um, initiatives. So we have a listserv that every student is, is part of and students receive emails from our Office of Internships and Career Services on a daily basis, multiple emails a day. So if students are paying attention and reading their emails, opportunities for internships on campus and all over the country or even international opportunities are being delivered directly to their inboxes. We also offer resume workshops, cover letter workshops. Uh, we will sit down and have a mock interview with a student if they have something coming up that they're maybe a little nervous about. Uh, we have um, a, a lectureship series called Calm Career Conversations, where we're inviting our professional and alumni network to talk to students about how they've navigated their careers and what that pathway looked like for them. We even offer an etiquette dinner. So this is an opportunity for students, uh, our students to receive a free five course meal, right? What's not to love about that? But the goal here is to teach a student how to talk about themselves in a networking environment. Teach them what fork to pick and, and what all of those, uh, you know, which way to pass the roles and all of those things. So we're removing all of those nerve inducing factors from those social environments so that we know when our students enter those environments, they are prepared to talk about themselves and really sell their skill set and to be incredibly hireable in those environments. We also have three of our own communication specific job fairs. So the university at large offers opportunities for job fairs um, for all of our students. These tend to be some of the largest in the country, which are excellent opportunities that we encourage all of our students to, to attend and to pursue um, options there. In addition to the university-wide job fairs, we offer communication-specific job fairs. We offer one here at home, one in Washington, D.C., and our largest and most successful job fair happens in New York City. These are job fairs that are only attended by Belisario students and only attended by communications industry employers. So our opportunity to really refine what that job search looks like is a powerful tool to help elevate and to help leverage our community, the Penn State community, and helping our students find jobs. So that was the introduction, a little bit about who we are. And so now that you know more about us, of course, the next step that we want to talk about is how we get you here and how we get you started to be part of the Belisario community. Um, so, of course, the next step for you all is to accept your offer of admissions. Right. And then we make it very easy for you to do that on your My Penn State account. We put a big red accept your offer button. But I also want to be very clear and let you all know that you have lots of time to make that decision. You have until May 1st to make that decision. And so everyone that's on this Zoom call and everyone you're going to interact with from Penn State, our job is to help you see yourself here, to help get you the information that you need to make your decision of whether or not Penn State's the right fit for you. So I hope that you'll use the rest of this session to make sure that you're asking great questions and you're getting the contact information that you'd like to have so that you can take the time that you need to feel good about deciding to be part of Penn State. One of the best things that you can do is stay connected. So of course, uh, I would love to meet and to talk with every single one of you on this call today. Again, my name is Emily. My contact information is on the screen there. Um, the website that I have included is an opportunity for you, yes, to learn more about the college, but it's also an opportunity for you to schedule a follow-up vi visit. So whether that's a follow-up Zoom call where we can talk one-on-one -on -one just about you and your experiences and you, what you want to learn about at Penn State, or if you'd like to come visit us in person, we would love to show off the Belisario Media Center and get to know a little bit more about you. So you can schedule any of those appointments through the link that's on your screen now. And then one of the best ways to help you judge whether or not 
the Belisario College is going to be a good fit for you, is to take a look at what our current students are doing and what our current students are producing. The best way to see this work is to follow us across our social media. This is where we're posting current students' work. This is where we're posting stories about the amazing work and the really, really exceptional opportunities that our students are pursuing. So again, take a look at all of our social media. And if you see a post that you think, that's it, I wanna be part of that, or I want my name on that byline, that's typically a pretty good indicator that the Belisario College and Penn State is a good fit for you. So now that you have listened to me talk for an extended time, I am so excited to be able to turn over the screen to some of our wonderful students. So I'm going to stop sharing. And as I do that, I'm going to ask that our students uh, unmute and turn their cameras on. And we are going to start kind of a Q&A, a student panel conversation today. So again, our, so we're gonna go around the, the Zoom room and introduce our students one at a time. They're gonna tell you their name, where they're from, what their major, minor certificates, all of those great credentials that they're earning here. They're also gonna tell you what they do outside of the classroom. So again, as they introduce themselves and you're thinking about questions you'd like these students to cover, please feel free to drop those questions in the chat or in the Q&A feature, and we will make sure we answer your questions today. Um, oh, you can turn on their cameras. All right, so we're gonna fix that. But as we do, Jay, since you spoke up in the chat and told me you can't turn your camera on, as Nikki and I try to fix that in the background, would you like to unmute and introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Jay Sobardo. I'm a senior and I'm from Latrobe, PA, which is like an hour outside of Pittsburgh. And I'm double majoring in broadcast journalism and political science. Wait, let's see. Oh. There we go. Wonderful. Um, yeah, broadcast journalism, political science. What else am I missing? <laughs> you do a lot, and that's good. Your tour guide. Yeah. Oh, what I'm involved in. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm a tour guide for Belisario. So if anybody comes for a tour, I might be giving it to you. Um, I'm also involved in PSN. So under PSN TV, there's a couple different shows. I'm involved in PSN News as a news anchor and Nittany Talk as a panel, uh, a political panelist. And I just finished up my time in the Center County Report, which is a class you can take as a junior or senior. Um, and for them, I anchored and was a reporter. And I'm part of Society of Professional Journalists. I'm the vice president for that. And... I'm sure there's other things I'm missing, but yeah, those are the big ones. Thanks, Jace. Uh, Catherine, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine. I'm a senior at Penn State, which is crazy to say. I feel like I was just talking to Emily and Nikki like literally yesterday about coming to Penn State. So it's crazy that I'm already a senior, but I'm from Villanova, PA. Um, I'm majoring in public relations with a few certificates in sports journalism, business and diversity studies. Um, on campus, I'm involved in a couple different things. I'm a Belisario Fellow. I'm also in the Shire Honors College. Um, I was the president of the Association for Women in Sports Media here at Penn State. Um, and most of my time on campus is taken up. Um, I've been a social media intern with Penn State football for the past three seasons, which has been such a great experience. And I've interned in a couple of other places, such as um, the Minnesota Vikings and the NFL League office during the Super Bowl, um, Oakview Group, which is like a, a sports and entertainment partnerships company. Um, I'm also a host for 46 Live, which has been really, really fun. Highly recommend getting involved in THON. Um, if you come to Penn State, I also danced my um, sophomore year. We have a couple 46 Live members on the call, too. So that's I super forgot. Fun. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, Jay forgot. He's a, he's a, he's like one of our one of our greatest hosts. He's amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm variety in, involved in a variety of things on campus, but I've loved my time at Penn State. And it's great to meet you all virtually, even though I can't see you. <laughs> Since Georgie gave such a excited reaction to Catherine's introduction, I'm going to make you go next. Awesome. So hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Georgia Peters. I am a senior majoring in telecommunications. I'm originally from Natrona Heights, Pennsylvania, which is about 20 minutes north of Pittsburgh. Um, and I'm involved in a lot. So I'll shout out 
46 Live first. I am one of the executive producers for 46 Live. I've been doing that for two years now. Um, just like Jace, I'm also a part of the Center County Report, but as a telecom student, I do most of the directing, and I'm happy to announce that I will be an executive producer for Center County Report next semester. Um, I'm also a Belisario tour guide. I work for the video department um, at Penn State Athletics, and I also do stage crew for the BJC, but that's a little bit about me. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Georgia. Nick, you're next. All right. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Volpe. I'm currently a junior at Penn State. I'm studying telecommunications. I am from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I just got back a couple hours ago, so good to put uh, the semester away. Finally, all that's done, which is great. Um, a couple things I do, like Jace, I also do tours and everything like that. I also am the executive producer for PSN TV show. Um, well, it's actually getting a new name. It was called Today Sports Live, but we're working on rebranding a little bit. So that's exciting. Um, I also am happy to announce I just got executive director for PSN News that Jace was a part of as well. So that's super exciting. And then I also I also do the uh, Penn, State, Penn State Athletic Live Video Production with Georgia as well. Uh, we just did some uh, men's hockey replay. Absolutely killed it. And um, let me think. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And then uh, I think I think that's pretty much it. I'm also a member of Com Radio. I do a talk show about Philly sports. So if we got any Philly fans in here, uh, feel free to shout out. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, Abby. Yeah, so that's hard to follow up. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Abby Tarpy. I'm a senior film production major with a photography minor um i'm involved in pretty much everything film across the bellstar college so i'm the treasurer for the student film organization which is kind of like chill hanging out watching movies club the production chair for delta kappa alpha our cinematic society the production executive for com agency our student-run media marketing agency i'm a bellstario fellow with Catherine and mckenna um i tour guide over the summer when i can um and just kind of do everything in willard i'm always in willard so you will always see me there and mckenna hi uh, i'm mckenna wall i'm a junior broadcast journal journalism major from allentown pennsylvania um as abby just said i am a belisario fellow um i'm also involved with com radio and Moving On, which is Penn State's annual music festival. I'm the director of sponsorship for them. Um, and that's a free music festival for the students. That's a really good event to work on. Um, during Thon Weekend, I'll do crew for 46 Live. This past summer, I interned with the Found with Commodores as a videographer. And right now I'm interning with Penn State Sports Properties um, as a property assistant, which is pretty much just dealing with corporate sponsorships um, on Penn State game days, whether it's football, volleyball, wrestling, gymnastics, all that stuff. Um, and I feel like I'm definitely, oh, and After the Whistle, I'm an executive producer of After the Whistle, um, which is kind of like, I, I would call it like Penn State Sports Center. Um, we highlight a lot of local high school sports, football in the fall, and then, um, like lacrosse, softball, baseball, those sorts of things in the spring. Um, but it's primarily high school sports. We're the only live show other than Center County Report that's produced by the college. So it's a really good way to get experience in the live studio um before you can take that upper classman class and i just found out that george is going to be one of my eps i'm taking center county report next semester so that makes me so happy so excited to work with you georgia i'm so Wonderful. excited <laughs> <laughs> i love this community that's already emerging here um so we've got lots of great questions so my students on the panel um anyone is welcome to answer any of the questions you can just unmute yourself and speak up uh, so one of the first questions did has have any of you studied abroad or had an interesting experience that wasn't here on campus? I, I can, no, you go, Jace, you go, and then I'll go. Okay. Well, so I was gonna say I haven't studied abroad, but one of the classes you can take as a journalism student is international reporting. I forget what uh class number that is um but so it's a class you can take after you take so many prerequisites and you basically go to a foreign country over spring break so you spend your time leading up to that like researching the country finding stories setting up interviews and so 
Last year, they went to Estonia. This year, um, we're going to Istanbul, Turkey. So it, you, you're you not going places that people would typically travel to. Like I know with a lot of the study abroad programs, people are going to France or England or somewhere like that, which is great. And you're getting great experiences. And then with this international reporting class, you're going to places that you might not always think of traveling to, but it's definitely a great opportunity to get some exposure and um, work on some really great stories. Yeah, definitely. For me, I'm looking at studying abroad for this summer. Um, there's a lot of programs offered in the summer, like May Masters, which is just like the month of May, or like a June program if you don't want to commit to a whole semester. Or if you want to commit to the whole summer, you could probably find a program for that as well. And then I'm not sure if Emily already talked about the Hollywood program, but that's another program where you can spend like the spring semester in Los Angeles. I have a lot of friends who have had really good experiences with that. Yeah, I did after my sophomore year, the Maymester Manhattan program. And I was like the first class of the in-person. Um, the first year they did it because of COVID, it was like online, but we were the first class that like went to New York. And that was like such a great experience. The program is like mostly for freshmen and sophomore. It's kind of like an exploratory um, look into like the New York City um, media in industry, industry. So we went to like um, New York Times, NBC Universal, uh, Fubo TV, which is like a sports streaming service. Um, and then we went to a bunch of ad and PR agencies. And that was just like a really great over review of like kind of what the media landscape looks like in general at that point when I was just finishing up my sophomore year I still like wasn't exactly sure what I want to do I'm honestly still not exactly sure what I want to do but it was definitely helpful to like be on the ground and like see how companies operate and get to meet people face to face so that was a great experience and it was super fun in New York we, it, there was like it was a small enough group so you could like really like get to know people and I think there was only like 12 of us and then Bob Martin and Dean Harden came with us so that was a really great experience and with New York, if you don't want to do the program or for some reason, like maybe you have an internship already that you can't do it over the summer, there's two, I think there's actually three job expos, but one is in DC and then one's in New York. So you can go for a day, take a bus down to either city. Um, for me personally, I did the one in New York City and they also do, so as a film major, there's a closed film and friends event after where it's like a networking event with alumni that you get to show senior theses and like teasers of projects they also showed a project that was alumni coming back to state college and working with students last year um and then you kind of have like a mixer outside of the theater where then you kind of get to talk about your projects where you're at and then also find out where people in new york city are at and kind of how those alumni are doing thank you everyone um so we have a couple questions in here about changing their major um, and how easy is it to change your major once you're in the college? So um, to start to answer that question, all of you in the audience today, you have been admitted to the to Penn State and to the Belisario College as a communications pre-major. All right. So even if you put film or journalism or advertising on your application, you've been admitted as a communications pre-major. This means that you've got some time to explore. You have three semesters to get out there and try things and, and to work with people like Nikki to take the right classes that are going to give you the exposure, but also be useful regardless of the path that you choose to take. Um, so you will declare your major depending on the student, but typically it's in the spring semester of their sophomore year. So students on the panel, did all of you know exactly what you wanted to do? Did you change your major? How'd you pick a minor? How easy is it to explore and figure things out? Um, yeah, I can I can start this one. I came in, I applied thinking I was gonna do uh, film production. And I realized once I, I had a, a freshman seminar course and one of the advisors, Jamie is his name, he's actually my advisor now. He came in and he, kind of explored this is the first semester of my freshman year he came in and just told us what each major was about you know like we said we came in as just pre-communications you know not set in stone and I'm listening to him talk and I'm like oh I much I much more like the live production and stuff like that you know the PSN TV stuff rather than the film that's more my route and you know a couple of weeks later I had a meeting with my my advisor at the time and it was the, the easiest most seamless transition genuinely like I went I was like hey uh I don't think I want to do film you know I you know I, a lot of the prereqs for and like gen eds they all are kind of under the same umbrella of just calm you know they're not for specific majors or anything like that if that makes sense but so for me it was the most seamless transition you know the next semester I took an intro to telecom class 
and, you know, joined some clubs that I thought were more geared towards telecom. And I haven't looked back since. But once you're in the college itself, bouncing in between majors, you know, as long as you're not just bouncing around the whole time, like you kind of get an idea, you know, like you said, about spring semester, or sophomore year, it's it's a seamless transition. I don't I, I speak from my personal experience, but other people as well, I've heard is it's it's just easy. You know what I mean? As long as you're communicating to your advisors and stuff like that, it's it's pretty seamless. Nick. So the next question, um, when you all introduce yourself, you all are all very busy students. Um, so we also talked about the importance of getting involved, right? That's what helps you make these big decisions. That's what helps you find your fit. It feels like a lot. So how do you manage your time? How do you figure out what to do, when to do it, and, and how to get started? How do you figure that process out? I think um, I had, oh, oh. Sorry, um, so um, I think I'm I'll, I guess I'll start with this one I am quite busy on campus I'm sure you heard me list off like at least four jobs plus all the club activities I do on top of being a full-time student for me personally I prefer it that way I can't maybe the other people on the call don't agree with this but I personally find that the more busy I am um, I was very active in my high school as well the more busy I am the better I am at time management and I will say um, all of my decisions like about what activities and clubs I wanted to get involved in really did shape like my career path. Like with 46 Live, I wouldn't have known about how much I love putting together a live stream setup or doing live production if I didn't get involved with 46 Live sophomore year. It was a little difficult as a freshman because everyone but Nick and McKenna on this call, we had COVID freshman year. So we were all on a laptop and there was nothing in person. So that was kind of like a dampener. So I kind of made it my goal sophomore year to just get involved as much as possible. And I I mean, I think as long as you know how to do time management and you don't overwork yourself, you're going to be just fine. Yeah, the thing I'll add to that is, so like I said, I'm a double major. So I have all my involvements with journalism stuff. But then for my political science side, I s still have like extracurriculars I do with that. So one of the clubs I'm in is called Lion Caucus. We're like a political advocacy group on behalf of Penn State. Um, so when when it comes to that, it's just a matter of kind of keeping everything organized. So I know, okay, Monday nights I have Lion Caucus. Um, Tuesday nights I have Nittany Talk. Every other Wednesday I have PSN News. And you're kind of blocking those times out. But the other thing I would add is that all the clubs that you get involved in, they're I encourage everyone to get involved and just try out clubs. You don't even have to like stay in the club, but everyone in the club is going to be very kind with your time. So if you say, Hey, I have an exam tomorrow. I can't make it to the meeting. No one's going to give you a hard time about that because everyone has struggled at least once and knows that, you know, school comes before anything else. So don't let, your uh, time management kind of scare you away from joining different clubs because it's definitely feasible. And to yeah. support no. time management, <laughs> um, that's comparable to what you'd actually be doing in the industry with this type of communications, these types of communications degree, where if you are interested in something that's freelance or multi-management or how to run shows, you're not only going to be doing one show, you're going to be doing multiple different things. So building those time management skills now is what will actually pre prepare you for the industry. And like Jace was saying, comparable to how everyone will prioritize school, everyone here is involved in a lot, but it's all different things. So you can figure out how to balance very casual organizations with very professional organizations and things that are resume building versus social and structural. Yeah. And then I just have one more quick thing to add. Um, it's like a big community between all the clubs. So even if you're not involved in a certain club or class, there might be people that are in it that like heard, oh, you know, Jace is in PSN and he's really good at talking about different news things. We want to do like a little podcast and have him on stuff like that. George is in a live uh, production class right now and they did like a homecoming recap of the homecoming parade and they reached out to me and someone else because They've seen what we we do. We've worked together before. So even though I'm not in the class, I came on and I hosted their recap show. So you're getting more opportunities outside of just what you're involved in. But getting involved and getting your name and your face out there is crucial. 
Yeah, I think this is a really important question to ask. And for me personally, I've kind of treated my classes and schoolwork as like my job. Um, and then like everything else leads into just like my nights and like, I don't know, it's it's just like more of a social thing. Like as you join your clubs, those people become your friends. So like, yes, you're building that experience and um, like maybe for some internships you're getting paid, but at the same time, like you're working with people that you really enjoy being around. Um, so it's something that you really enjoy doing. Um, like I personally, as much as I can, do not do homework on Saturdays and Sundays because that's just like, I just want to do nothing. I want to watch movies. Um, so you kind of just have to find what works for you. Yeah, one final thing. I know we have other questions and stuff, but similar to what Jason McKenna were saying, you know, everybody, you know, we have 46 Live and PSN TV and Com Radio and The Fellows, like all these different organizations. But you, you know, if it wasn't obvious already, a lot of us know each other just because we're involved in so much. Like, I want to stress that the social part of doing all these clubs is really where the sweet spot is. Like, for example, in Com Radio, everybody has this table in this building that you just hang out in. Like McKenna, you, you can see me and McKenna there 24 seven. Like we live at that table, but you know what I mean? And again, for me, I say this when I'm doing tours as well, McKenna hinted at it, you know, the school and the the jobs and stuff that's work. But for us, because we're all so passionate about it, all the clubs and stuff we do, it's fun. You know what I mean? Cause you know, it's the classic type of thing. Like, Oh, like I have to do this show and this show. It's like, for us, it's just, Oh, I'm so excited to go on air today. I know Jace loves news and doing all that, like seeing him in there. And even Georgia, like when we were doing athletics and stuff, we're just so excited. We're like, Oh my God, you're doing replay today. Like what? I, like, it's just fun because we all know each other and we're able to do multiple things. So it, it just takes the stress away. Just being in a, a fun environment. All right. We have about four minutes left of this session. So what I would like to do is go around the room. We're going to start with Catherine. Um, in 30 seconds or less, I want you to give me your why Penn State or what advice do you have for high school seniors right now? Catherine, you're up. Oh, gosh. OK. Um, biggest advice. I'll I'll do that. Why Penn State? I come from a big Penn State family, so like it was always happening. But why? Uh, biggest advice I would say would just be like when you get here just like don't stress because I know we we're just talking about like all the involvements that we have and I came in as a broadcast journalism major I wanted to be a satin reporter and then the second I just kind of like let things happen and just kept my like I don't know kept my horizons open and just like joined things talked to people like I just felt like that's when everything kind of opened up for me I switched my major to PR I joined like a bunch of clubs but like everyone's timing is different and like don't be overwhelmed by like all the opportunities that happen on here because like Calm classes yes they're like so enriching and like the professors are wonderful but we're not doing like engineering or rocket science so you like do have time for these clubs that everyone's talking about so it might seem like a lot but once you get on campus and start meeting people talking to your professors talking to your advisors I promise it won't be as overwhelming so yeah just don't stress it will all be okay <laughs> McKenna your why Penn State or your your best advice I'll do why Penn State. I didn't want to go to Penn State. I'm from Pennsylvania. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to go there. Everyone goes there. And then I visited for Accepted Students Day. I met Emily. I went to a panel just like this. And everyone just seemed like so excited to be there. And I really liked that you could get an internship your first semester. Um, and that's something that I did. So I know this leads into advice. But if you want an internship your first semester, ask Emily about how you can do that. She'll get you connected to all the right people. Um, that's really why I chose it. Like first week, you can start doing everything that you want to try out. Abby, why Penn State or your best advice? Um, I'm also going to kind of do the same as McKenna. So I didn't want to come here, still didn't want to come here, ended up here because it was COVID. It was the cheapest school. It was very close to where I was from, safe school, whatever. Got here and really struggled my first year. So I ended up staying at Penn State because I got involved in comm agency, which I had mentioned earlier. It got me involved with people in Belisario, kind of a place to call home professional development and got me my first double internship. I had a three credit, two internship course the spring of my freshman year. So I got involved and essentially kept getting involved to the point that I fell in love with Penn State, even though I struggled those first few months. Thanks, Abby. Georgia. Yeah, so I guess I'll just do what they do. I guess we're on a Penn State didn't, I mean, not a hate train, but you know what I mean? I also didn't want to come here either. Um... <laughs> But same thing with Abby. I also struggled my very first semester here as it was COVID and I hated it. And then eventually I started to get involved just like her and I fell in love with the college. And if I have one word of advice for everyone, it's just like when you get here, if you get here, do not be afraid to try and fail, but then continue trying. 
I would not be where I am right now if I wouldn't have hit submit on a bunch of applications and got denied. You have to do it. Do not let failure stop you and always keep trying. That sounds cliche, but I, I mean it. I'll go. Okay. Um, I think she cut out. If you said me, I'm uh, so sorry. I think it cut yeah, out. Yeah, who'd you say? Sorry. Jace, you got to go. All right. All right. Um, so I'll just say, it. no matter how cliche it sounds like, seriously don't be afraid to put yourself out there the way you're going to get the best experience out of your time here is to put yourself outside of your comfort zone don't be afraid to fail you're going to get told no it's inevitable but you just, it's part of life and you just need to learn how to deal with it and like i've experienced it and you're it's 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 part of the college experience um and then the other thing i'd say is form relationships with your professors the average class size in the college of com is like what, like 25 kids or less or something like that. So you're getting these one-on-one -on -one experiences with professors that kids, my friends in engineering classes, their professors don't even know what their face looks like. So you're, make these connections with your professors. They will help you out tremendously with career advice, school advice, life advice. Um, that That's probably the best thing I could say. Thanks, Jace. Nick. All right, I'll end it off. I'm going to start a timer for myself, too. I'm actually the same as McKenna. I was, I kind of, you know, I chose Penn State because I knew they had a communications program. And I went to Accepted Students Day, and I looked at the student panel, sold instantly. But my one piece of advice is I'll go a step further from Jace. Talk to, be, have a good relationship with your advisors and the internship office as well. They are, everybody's nodding. Like, everybody knows they are the best people ever. They are the nicest. They're the best at their job. They know everything about classes, courses, internships make a relationship with them just once a semester each. I promise you that that'll work wonders. That's how I have everything I have. I promise. Wait, so fast. I just really needed to say this. The only way that I've ever gotten my internships and I've had three internships is through that office, whether it was one of the fairs that they had, whether it was with a meeting or something like an application that they sent directly to my email, like all of them have come from that office. Bob Martin will blow up your email. Look at them though. <laughs> Well, thank you, students. We could continue this conversation for much, much longer, but we are out of time. So out of respect to our participants, we want to let you get to the next virtual session. The next virtual session is called Nittany Lion Next Steps. You should have a link to that. But before you go, I want to thank you for joining us. I hope you learned, you enjoyed learning more about the Belisario College and meeting some of our students. I did put my email right on the screen. So if you have questions, even if that question is, I'd rather talk to Nikki or I'd rather talk to Abby, great. Send me that. My job is to connect you with resources. My job is to be the first person in your Penn State corner. So please use me as a continued resource to understand what's waiting for you here at Penn State and in the Belisario College. Thank you all for joining us and enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye.